Hello guys, my name is Anna and I'm a Ukrainian and I vlog daily from my country Ukraine to keep you updated on the real life situation in my country Ukraine as this war continues. If you're new to the channel and like my videos, please subscribe because I believe the world needs to know more about Ukraine and of course we all have to see our victory over Putin's regime. And my today's video will be dedicated to one of the pillars of Putin's regime and that is his propaganda but it's soft western version. Honestly, I think we have to confess that in one of the spheres, Russia is still one of the best armies in the world, and that is in the sphere of informational war. At the very beginning of recent Russian-Ukrainian war in 2014, when they annexed our Crimea and took the territories of Donetsk and Luhansk regions, it was very difficult to demonstrate Ukrainians' vision of uh, this war, of this invasion, and many world media tried like, to avoid this topic or described it the way Russians wanted or in that neutral way. Of course, that was a problem because Russia was and still present in every country of the world, perhaps, and they broadcast their messages in more than 100 different languages of the world. They spend much money on that. The propaganda budget of Russia is uh, billions of dollars, and I think they spend more than any other authoritarian regime on the information they want to give to the world and, of course, inside Russia, too. I have decided to speak about it because sometimes in your comments and in your emails you inspire me to check some Russian channels or uh, you want my um, attitudes about, for example, the uh, channel, TV channel, Russian TV channel, Dorj. And here I will try to answer some of these questions. Well, first of all, I am not a consumer of Russian media or cultural product for ages. Not because I'm an angry Ukrainian. Long ago, it was not interesting for me. It was very Soviet for me, outdated and chauvinistic. And I'm the kind of person who, like knowing languages, can afford herself to watch something worthy if I choose to read or watch something online or on television. So I haven't been a consumer of Russian informational products for a really long period of time. That is why I consider myself more or less informationally healthy if it's possible to say so and that is why when you sometimes redirect me to the channels of popular russian youtubers or uh, interview channels i see that these are not good russians the ones that we are all looking for so hard but these are average representatives of soft russian propaganda I know that I'm not like the ideal with my choice of name for the channel. It was done when I had like, I don't know, a hundred subscribers and Anna from Ukraine. And then I see there are lots of other people from Ukraine and lots of other people from Russia and other things. So, but this is a simple way to invite your viewer. And many of those who claim they are from Russia and they are neutral or they are apolitical, they are dangerous. Why? Because their uh, position, their neutrality is the neutrality during war, is the neutrality during butcher crimes, is the neutrality during the genocide in Ukraine, in other countries. Uh, that's why like, you can be neutral when we're talking about olive oil, but you cannot be neutral when we're talking about murders of innocent children in hospitals that are bombed by your country's army. Also, many try to um, play with the emotions of the civilized Westerners, if it's possible to say. You know that in reality, the West is described as rotting and we have a special Soviet myth debunked theory. It seems to be number one about, no, number two about rotting West. You can check it if you want. This is the myth that Russia spreads inside its society, but those YouTubers, English-speaking YouTubers that work outside, they try to use the values of West. They know these are respect to freedom of speech, human values, and they try to manipulate and to describe themselves together with the rest of the people of Russia as victims of the Putin's regime. But we all remember very well that if the country is run by a dictator, it is not only a dictator to blame. Seems Churchill said that, and who are we to protest? I totally agree with that. I believe that uh, the government or the president of the country are the product of its society. And if something goes wrong, 
guys, I mean society, you have to change something. But in Russia, they produce that Tsars, tyrants, dictators every decade. So perhaps it is not just the Putin who is to blame, but also Russian society who accepted him for 22, 23 years. I cannot imagine a similar case in Ukraine. You heard about our revolutions, you heard about our anti-Russian, anti-authoritarian protests, and all of them resulted in success. And even now, during war, with all of these missiles flying uh, targeted at Ukraine, we're standing for freedom and democracy, because this is our choice, because our society is strong. And we control not our, only ourselves, we also control our government, and we control Russian orcs uh, who fail their plan in Ukraine. That's why I consider Russian society responsible for everything that is going on inside Russia. So those who try to manipulate and to depict Russians as victims of what? Like hundreds of millions of people are victims of 50 in the modern world with the access to information? No. And the greatest act of heroism seen by Russians is to flee the country as a protest to mobilization? Once again, no. This is not my story. So for me, all of these people are examples of soft Russian propaganda. They are not saying that Ukrainians are bad, we have to kill them, but they avoid topics about war, they avoid topics about politics, or they describe everything as uh, impossible to be changed. Also, all those interviews taken on the streets when people are hiding their eyes or saying some good things, they don't influence anyone, they are not broadcast inside Russia, and they are also targeted on the Western viewer. And for me, these are all examples of soft Russian propaganda. And we have to be careful because inside Russia, they use very aggressive forms of propaganda. They speak nonsense. They uh, have very strict censorship. Uh, many of the channels, I think all of the channels are state controlled or state owned. That's why there they can falsify news. They even falsify the speeches of EU leaders, for example, or American leaders, making things sound the way they want, taking something out of the context, uh, or even using uh, this uh, like various techniques to imitate. Uh, and Russians consume that. But they have, like you, we all know that if you want to find something on the internet right now, you will find. So they choose not to look for it and they are to blame for that. It's pretty honest. So all the other cases that describe Russia as a victim of Putin, Russia as a victim of West, Russia as a victim of sanctions, Russia as the victim of weather, Russia as the victim of alcoholism, I don't know what else, like hungry dogs on the streets, uh, bears in the windy forest. Russians are not victims. They have all the chances to live normal life. They have huge natural resources. They have the largest territory in the world and still, what do they do? They loot and rape, so they are to blame for that. And those people who want to describe Russia as a victim, for me, are workers of Russian propaganda, but a softer version of it. The one that will be acceptable for an educated and civilized Western viewer. But we have to be careful because they are present everywhere on Twitter, on Facebook, and inside of your countries, I'm sure you can think of some cases when Russians interrupted into important political, economical, cultural processes. And this is very shaky. This is very dangerous. This is also an example of an invasion, not yet territorial, but already spiritual, intellectual, and it can lead to problems. Like first the idea appears in Russian classes, then the idea appears on Russian television, then the idea appears in the minds of this plankton, if it's okay to call people like that, but you will forgive, I'm an angry Ukrainian, I'm a realistic Ukrainian, and uh, um, then uh, it appears on the streets of your country, uh, represented by the Russian troops who invade the territories, just saying, no, these are our territories, we are liberating you by killing you. So, uh, the case with the channel Dorst, many of uh, you consider it uh, uh, the oppositional channel. It, it was 
like forbidden in Russia, but Russians are really good at playing, like imitating that some people have troubles with the government, but these people are able to travel, able to speak. Now, if people are able to do that, they don't have troubles with Russian government. They are a voice of Russian government, but a different kind of that voice. And I know that a beautiful country, Latvia, uh, forbade uh, broadcasting of TV channel Dost because uh, of a very vivid example. They are opposition, but they uh, put a map of Russia with Crimea on it. So they support the annexation of Crimea just as the famous opposition of Navalny does. So he's not the future of Russia for me. And second, when describing the actions of Russian army, they named Russian army our army. By choosing this pronoun, they do not distance themselves from the crimes of the Russian army, but perhaps they just don't like some things. And, you know, it is just worse with the Nazi regime. You cannot find anything positive in Nazis, so you cannot find anything positive in Russian army and Putin's uh, regime. That's why it's very, very, very important to be uh, careful because I'm not afraid of this word. This soft Russian propaganda is very infectious. It is spoken in a civilized Western manner without bullshit that Russians practice on their own TV. Uh, they choose nice people with like, I don't know, good English. Uh, they don't focus on uh, crimes and killings of Ukrainians, but they focus on the problems inside Russia that you have to feel um, compassionate to their society. But come on, guys, we don't need to feel compassion. They have their country. They can rule their country, but that's the way they rule it. That's the, the choice they make, because every decade they nurture a new dictator and they dream of Soviet Union. That's why I invite you once again to watch the list of our videos, Soviet Myths Debunked, where we talk about those popular USSR myths that still fuel Russian propaganda. I'm very grateful to those of you who become my patrons and buy me coffee and thus help our projects develop. But most importantly, thank you for being in Ukra with Ukraine in these dark times, but I'm sure we will see our victory together. Slava Ukraini!